Entrepreneurially Thinking is a presentation of BioSTL and CET, Center for Emerging Technologies, with Rare Gem Productions, changing the way you view new ventures, including you on the pathway to success with your business in the St. Louis marketplace and beyond. Here's your hosts, Cheryl and Christy. Now let's get thinking entrepreneurially. Hi, welcome to Entrepreneurially Thinking. This is Cheryl Watkins Moore. I'm the director of the Bioscience Inclusion Initiative with BioSDL. I am Christy Maxfield. I am the director of CET's Entrepreneur Development Services, and I work here in the St. Louis community to help entrepreneurs in advanced technology fields pursue their dreams. And we are so excited to be here today to talk to you about what we think is a hot topic here in St. Louis: Entrepreneurially Thinking. So, Entrepreneurially Thinking. Thinking is an exploration of the mindset of not only entrepreneurs, but those who want to be innovative in the work that they do. What's going on here in St. Louis, how they might be able to get involved, what it might mean to their company, whether it's new or established, what it might mean for them as professionals. Really peel back the onion and make things more accessible on all levels. And there's tons of opportunity. What we found is that there's not a lot of people tapped into a growing, huge opportunity here in the St. Louis market. We want to get those folks that are sitting in boring jobs, maybe, those who haven't considered even thinking about entrepreneurial ventures, but those folks who can take their boring job and re-innovate it, make it something that's new, that's different, that's innovative, take their current job description and make it so that they are creating innovation where they sit. So we decided to get together and have some fun and really just talk about the mindset that you need to be a part of everything that's exciting and interesting and innovative here in St. Louis and realize that this community is open to as many people as possible and there's really nothing limiting you but your own mindset and we really want you all to join us in that conversation and learn more with us and have fun with us because when we're having fun then we're definitely pushing the envelope and if we're pushing the envelope then we're making St. Louis into a creative innovative entrepreneurial place and that's what we do for a living. What I always really want to encourage people and I I look forward to talking about over the next several weeks is to find your place. It might mean to be a subject matter expert. It might mean to be a mentor. Every day I talk to entrepreneurs who are the expert in their idea, expert in the problem they're trying to solve. You don't have to necessarily step out of your comfort zone to talk about building a new venture if that's not something you really want to do. I think that's where the excitement is because it doesn't always have to be about starting your own venture. Being involved in the bioscience, the IT, the consumer product, um, manufacturing, all of those areas are served well by people who can think outside of the current reality. It could be something in your current job experience or an opportunity that you're looking at or your company's looking at to grow from and you can take the same mindset and apply that to what you're doing today and grow the opportunity within your organization. And whether that's at a new or existing company, there's so much opportunity out there. If you are bent to uh, develop a new venture, this is something or a way that you can look at developing that venture. Well, you know, when we started on this journey here with this podcast, Chrissy and I did some homework with some folks in our community. And we posed the question, what is an entrepreneur? And I think what was surprising for us, we accept the term entrepreneur because that's something that, you know, it's a business term. We've been around business people. But folks who are building these small companies don't see themselves, especially in communities that are typically not in the venture backed landscape. Some of them are high growth, but they're not the tech focus where they're looking for venture type of backing or financials. These folks are hardworking business people. They are growing their business and they see themselves as business owners. They don't necessarily see themselves as entrepreneurs. That's almost like an elitist term. And especially coming out of communities such as the African American community, the Hispanic community, these people are family oriented type of businesses and they could be building high growth businesses. They might not understand how to scale it so that it grows quickly, but they have passion about what they're doing. They obviously are inspired by something, either paying their bills, paying their mortgage, getting their kids through school. And it's just something that they really thrive on. So those are the people that, you know, when we're talking to in this particular podcast, we're going after folks who have a real desire to create their own pathway. 
An entrepreneur is a passionate person who's decided that the idea they have for the world is so important that they're going to put everything they've got into making it a reality. I grew up in a small business family. My grandfather started the family florist in a detached garage, and my father started in the business when he was 17. And so I never knew what it was for my dad to go to an office because dad's office was the family florist. And I knew that that took every ounce of energy he had And I could not imagine being an entrepreneur or a small business owner because that just seemed like a whole lot of work. (laughs) I remember that sometimes the job had to come before everything else. But because dad did that job and because mom worked full time, a family of four could have what it needed. It put food on the table. It put clothes on our back. It made sure that those of us who wanted to go to college went to college. And it created a a stability in our family and a closeness in our family that probably wouldn't have been there before. Probably wouldn't have been there if he did go to an office every day. Mm -hmm. But it also taught me how hard it is to run a business. The commitment of time, the emotional drain of worrying about how the money's coming in and how fast the money's going out, trying to meet your customers' needs, having unforeseen forces like snowstorms on Valentine's Day, totally take advantage of your opportunity to make a living, the need to have all the phones go to your house because you've been snowed in for five days before needing to get those roses on the doorstep, that it took all of us to do it. So even those of us who might not have called ourselves florists or business owners, were part of that undertaking. The reward was that we got to see the fruits of our own labor. The reward was that a hard day's work meant that dad paid us, so we understood that hard work was rewarded. (laughs) And it also meant that we got to spend the day together. And I don't think we appreciated that at all when we were younger, at all. But uh, we spent a lot of time together because taking your child to work was just part and parcel of how my family lived their life. There was no just take your daughter to work day. There was, I want to go to work with dad on Sunday. Mm -hmm. And he would get his roll, his buttered roll and his coffee and his newspaper. And you'd get your cup of milk and your buttered roll. (laughs) And you'd start your day together at the shop. So for me, entrepreneurs, they are, they're part of my family history. Uh, My great grandfather owned a store. My grandfather owned a store. My father owned a store. My uncle owns a store. My brother owns his own business. And really the, the underlying theme there has been the hard work that it takes to do it. And I watch them all do it on their own. And if I can bring anything to the entrepreneurial community here in St. Louis, it's the idea that you don't have to do it on your own, that there are amazing professionals and dedicated people who want to be part of your success, and that there are a million ways for other people to be involved in helping new ideas come to fruition, even if they're not the idea person themselves. So because I knew how much work owning a business would be, I never really set out to do that. I've spent most of my career working in nonprofit and doing fundraising and being part of the teams that allow our communities to thrive in those ways. And it was when working with those organizations that I was able to really understand social entrepreneurship. And so it was through the lens of changing our community through earned revenue and social enterprise that I really came to understand entrepreneurship in a whole new way as a very powerful force in creating social change. And that gave me the opportunity to help co-found the Mission Center and learn firsthand how hard it is to build a company from the bottom up, to create a customer base, to deliver on your promises to those customers, to build the faith and the trust of the community in what you're doing and, and the product that you're delivering. And then I've had the good fortune to then move into a space where I can work for a nonprofit whose entire purpose is to train entrepreneurs in those very same skill sets. I work with uh, commercial entrepreneurs on a day-to-day basis in the IT, consumer manufactured product, and bioscience fields. But the principles are all the same. It comes down to how are you going to make money, what value are you going to deliver to the community, and who's going to reward you for that value by paying for your product. And that's where we look at all of that when we go in our programming. But that's after a lot of time has been spent trying to figure out what problem to solve, how to solve it, and um, why it's needed in our world. And that comes from inspiration. You have to be inspired by what you're doing. People will work very, very hard for a very, very long time uh, for very little, if no money, (laughs) to bring their dream 
uh, mm-hmm. to fruition. And to have the honor to be part of that process is what I get to do every day. And so doing a podcast where we get to talk about those people and the work they're doing and how other people can be involved in that journey and how you can be inspired in your own life to create change and to find opportunities and to unearth new ways of doing things. There's nothing better. Well, it's so interesting. Christy's um, childhood is very, very different from mine. I think that's why from a contrast uh, and co- uh, comparison is very interesting. My parents were blue collar workers. My dad worked in a post office and my mom was a teacher, a kindergarten teacher. They had no entrepreneurial bent at all. Uh, their their interest was education. Uh, they went back to school late in life. My dad was able to get his college degree when he was in his 40s and so did my mom um we had one family member that was a business owner um he had a shoe repair shop uncle joe and i worked as a 13 year old that's where i that was my first job was in his shoe repair shop and actually i always tell people this was before Registers actually help you count money. You had the old time registers where you took a $20 bill and the cost of the product was maybe fifteen twenty seven. You got to learn how to count. Okay. So that's where I was exposed to entrepreneurship actually was through my uncle. I worked for him all through high school. Um, and my family's focus, uh, because my family worked very, very hard. My sister and I were 12 years apart, but my family's message was, go to school. I don't care where you go to college, but you're going to college. And beyond that, it was, you need to go on and get a professional degree. I went on to medical school. Um, I had a surgical practice, practiced for several years, and then I was a doctor in the doctor's lounge, always reading the Wall Street Journal or the some type of business um, uh, periodical. And at one point, the landscape in medicine was changing so dramatically. It was really focused on not just health care, but was the business side of health care. And... You know, after being out in practice and having to fight the bureaucracy in the hospital system for so long and not understand it, that's what really drove me back to uh, pursue a business degree. Because I thought that if I'm going to stay in healthcare, I want to be on the side uh, because I was very patient focused uh, and patient focused from uh, being able to provide good health care, but at a reasonable cost, of course. Right. Um, And I thought, well, I'm going to, you know, go back get my business degree and I'm going to come back in the hospital situation and, you know, help write that ship. Well, once I got into the business side and business school, I absolutely loved it because it was so different from medicine in that in medicine, you're memorizing. Uh, But in business, you actually have the opportunity. There is gray area in medicine. Gray area means you can hurt somebody. and You don't want to do that. Um, So I I thoroughly enjoyed uh, being on the business side and I really loved developing a strategy in business. And that was I. I went down the corporate track, started my career at a a blue chip company and ended my corporate career at a big blue chip company. And I think the perspective from Christy and, and my life was, you know, my family, their biggest focus was get a job. You need to get that good corporate job and you don't look back. Um, I stepped off of the corporate track. I had been on the corporate track for a while. I had attained, I was vice president, general manager for a large major pharma uh, company on the East Coast, ran a $100 million division, and then decided, you know what? I really like this whole startup community. And that's when St. Louis was going through the booming uh, aspect of the startup market here in St. Louis was really starting to boom. And I got engaged with the biogenerator, which is here in the St. Louis market. They uh, invest in life science companies here. And I became an entrepreneur in residence. Um, And what that means is they look for people who have either deep science or deep business experience to work with their startup companies to help them either through deal structure, business strategy, funding opportunities, that kind of thing. Did that for about a year and a half. And it gave me a really good opportunity to look around this marketplace to see, you know, what could I do? I was pumped by all of the activity going on. I looked at, wow, there's a lot of information infrastructure being developed here in the St. Louis market that didn't exist. Cortex was uh, really growing. 
programming was uh, being put in place to support some of these um, young entrepreneurs. But sadly, what I didn't see was a reflection of those in the community that look like me, a woman of color. I didn't see not just women, period, but certainly people of color. So when BioSCL approached me after about a year and a half with BioGenerator, BioSCL was very interested in creating programming to get folks that are that were not in in the community interested in starting high growth, high net worth ventures in the life science sector. And this was more women and underrepresented minorities. And even though I had started my company, because I, I was, I'm a co-founder of a startup here in the market, um, a healthcare IT-focused company, I thought it was really important to really give my time to what I think is a very important initiative. If we want to create St. Louis as a market where everyone in this community is involved in innovation, I think we have to be very intentional. So that was my focus when I got on board um, with developing programming around how do we get women and minorities interested in the life science sector and have them understand what are you talking about when you talk about bioscience? Because it's a scary term to a lot of people. They look at bioscience and go, I'm not a scientist. I'm not a chemist. I don't know anything about this. But our message was that, you know, as a professional, You probably, I'm sure, have skills that these companies need. Most of these founders are technical founders. They know what they're developing in the science space, but they don't know finance. Many of them don't know marketing. They don't know regulatory. They don't know legal. So they need all of these different functional roles within their organization. I always tell the story of a a woman who worked in one of our small incubators out um, out on the Monsanto campus. At that point, it was called NIDAS Center. Um, She was an administrative assistant out there, and she did all the bookkeeping for all the companies out there. Well, when they decided to close that facility, she looked at her skills, and she was a you know, a relatively young woman. And she was like, wow, you know what? I've been doing the bookkeeping for all these companies. Why don't I start thinking about doing bookkeeping as a, as a, as a service offering for, these com- for other companies? She did that. She started her own company. And I think now she's doing the books for over probably 100 plus startup companies that are right here in our district. So here's one person who doesn't have like 50 different PhDs and everything else. She looked at the market opportunity and saw, wow, there's an opportunity for me to start my business. And she's been very successful at building that. That means for you, if you're out there looking at, wow, I have some, I think I have some skills. You have more skills and more knowledge than probably what you think you have. And what we want you to do is explore that and be able to take that knowledge, take those skills and and match it to what your passion is and potentially look at starting or being a part of a startup uh, in some sort of way. When I look at going back to what Christie's background is, you know, I think for African-Americans, for people of color, you know, the the one thing that gets in your head and that's, I think, from a lot of our family background is you don't walk away from a good corporate job (laughs) Um, for many reasons. And I know that there are different ways to start your business. You don't have to walk away from that good corporate job. You can stage your business right alongside as you are still working. You can start your business on the side. That means you work a lot longer and more hours. But I will tell you this, those hours that you're working on your own venture don't even seem like hard work. I'm up sometimes to last night. I was up at one o'clock in the morning doing email, but it was okay. Because I'm doing it with something that I enjoy. Working on the inclusion initiative, I think, is so important. And I enjoy doing that because I think bringing the message, there is so much opportunity in the St. Louis market and that we don't have all of our community tapped into it. And we need to do that in order to be a thriving 
innovative community that as an economic driver here in our marketplace, we need to make sure that all of our folks have the opportunity to engage. So when we were thinking about what a subject matter expert might be, it's you, the person who's spent years and years doing what they do best, and now is going to come out and tell people who have never really experienced that part of business life what it takes to be successful in that area of business. They are not an expert in all the other parts of business, and that's why they come to CET. That's why they come to the Square One program. That's why they work with BioSTL Fundamentals and find all the other ecosystem partners out there, because they know they need a good team and subject matter experts standing up in front of the room, uh, whether it's a presentation setting or perhaps even going to the other side of the table and being a mentor and working one-on-one with individuals who are trying to launch their new venture. These are ways today that people can add the entrepreneurship and innovation community into their world without ever having to step off that cliff of being an entrepreneur themselves. Mm -hmm. But for those who are ready to be entrepreneurs, we've got lots of programming. There is so much in St. Louis to get involved in. Even if you're trying to just explore what this entrepreneurial ecosystem looks like. You guys should come out and check out Venture Cafe, which is a weekly opportunity to network with folks from different industries, different backgrounds, explore what the ecosystem offers. Each one of our groups that are part of the ecosystem, like I-10, which is focused on IT type of endeavors, go on their website, look at what type of events they're sponsoring, and I would always suggest to those folks, go out and partake of these activities. BioSCL, we kicked off our inclusion initiative uh, about two and a half years ago. Um, our focus was increasing awareness in this marketplace because a lot of folks, they travel up and down the Cortex District downtown as well as all the way out where Helix is. And a lot of people don't even know what these organizations are, what these facilities are. And with all the building and all of the infrastructure bill that's going on here, it's hard to not understand and what's going on. So I would encourage you. I think there are events every day of the week. And that's really what we're going to explore. Mm-hmm. So it's it's not enough to just tell you that there's lots of events going on and we realize that. So we've really chosen this format to be able to bring some of those people, Mm -hmm. some of those skills, some of those ideas, some of those programs to you so that you can learn about them and start to really think about how does this fit into where I'm Mm -hmm. going and what I want to do. Because to your point, Cheryl, bricks and mortar are just one piece of the Mm -hmm. equation. T-Rex, Helix, Cortex, people may or may not know what Mm -hmm. these physically look like while those buildings and the community that they create are very important. What is more important Mm -hmm. is the programming and activities and the businesses Mm -hmm. that are going on and growing in those buildings. Mm -hmm. It's not just about the buildings. Absolutely. It's about the people and getting out and engaging with those folks. So mentorship is a great opportunity to get started. The companies that are here in the St. Louis market are in different stages of development. If you want to get involved as a mentor into the ecosystem, talk to folks who are building young companies. Go and see if you can go into their organization, see what's going on. Get involved with Christie's organization with Square One. It's a great way and a great opportunity to not not only mentor folks, because you have the skills. Um, if you are a professional sitting in one of our great office parks here uh, and you have a tremendous background, I think we all tend to undervalue what we bring to the table. I think folks can take their background, be able to provide insights that folks who are so closely involved with their startup might not have the opportunity to do. The mindset of an entrepreneur, the mindset of innovation is really about problem seeking and problem solving. It's about not looking back and not looking at your competitors, but really envisioning what could be and what will be due to your passion and your skills. It's really about possibility and potential. And when you take it out and you really look at it from that perspective, great things can happen. What we're trying to create is a platform for taking the constraints off of how you view new ventures. It's looking at having the mindset to look at the market. There are opportunities all over the market. There are problems in the marketplace where people come up with solutions every day. As an entrepreneur, somebody thinking about new ventures, what's the first thing they always say? I don't have a good idea. 
I don't know how to develop a good idea. But there are opportunities if you look in your environment all day long for new ideas and solutions to old problems. Christy, you brought up this really, I think, great example at our ideation seminar a couple weeks ago. What's one of the examples that you see in the healthcare market for a product that no one has really come up with a, a great solution for? I thought it was a great example. I'm always struck by the fact that walkers are still stabilized using tennis balls, <laughs> and no one has changed that way of doing business. <laughs> so it either isn't cost effective, or the tennis ball industry has the lock on tennis balls for walkers. That's right. <laughs> um, but, you know, clearly somebody saw a problem. Exactly. They figured out a solution. Mm-hmm. And to date, it's the best one going for that particular problem. And so, what's interesting, there is no partnership between a medical device company and a tennis ball company. No, but they both seem to be doing business together nonetheless. Right, right. So I think out of, what do they say, out of um, desperation, basically? is The mother the, of necessity? The mother of necessity. That's where, when we're talking about why create this platform? Because there are ideas everywhere. It's being focused enough to look at what are some of these problems? What's your passion? What do you like to do? And how do you bring solving that problem to the table in somewhat of a structured fashion? You've always shared, Cheryl, that you know you came to that point in your own career where it was stay in the corporate track or pursue something on your own. Mm-hmm. And you decided to step out on your own. Mm-hmm. I know when I was in nonprofits and doing nonprofit administration, the idea that I'd be an entrepreneur and then teach entrepreneurs wasn't really in my worldview, but that's how things evolved. Mm -hmm. So if I were listening, if I were five years back Mm -hmm. listening to this podcast, I would be looking for inspiration because only through inspiration are they going to find innovation. Mm -hmm. And innovation has to be unpacked. It's this word. We throw it around all the Mm -hmm. time. It means different things to different people. But I think at the heart of it, it's about inspiration. And so I want you to come and join us on a weekly basis to get your ideas flowing. Hear about the people and the programs and the projects that are going on in our community. Learn more about yourself. Really reflect on where you are and what you're doing, where you're going. And to learn more about those things you just heard a little bit about and you don't quite know what they are, we have the opportunity to introduce them to you, let you really understand what they do for our community, how they help individuals achieve their goals. All of it is about being inspired. Last year, Cheryl, BioSTL, I-10, St. Louis Makes, hosted the Vision Conference for the first time. Mm -hmm. And that really spoke to me in a lot of ways. So Jonathan Hollyfield was the keynote speaker for your Vision Conference. Mm -hmm. And what I walked away from when hearing Jonathan Mm -hmm. speak was that... 30, 40, 50 years ago, you knew where the good jobs were because you could see where the smokestacks were. Mm -hmm. And you followed the smokestacks and you got a good job in the factory or in the mine. You got a good blue collar opportunity because you could see where that job was and where you'd be working. And he talked a lot about how today the smokestacks are hidden. Mm -hmm. And I think when we look at Cortex and T-Rex and Helix and all of these other places, what we've created are hidden smokestacks. And our job is to take this opportunity to show people the way, the path Mm -hmm. to where those jobs are Mm -hmm. and to make that path clear and real and attainable. What you've shared is that the opportunity lies in finding the thing that you are most passionate about that you have the greatest aptitude and ability for and that there's opportunity for in our community. And and when those three items intersect, that's where you're going to find your place. Your spark. Your spark is in the center of the opportunity, ability, and aptitude. And that's what we want to get you thinking. What I see for entrepreneurs, small business owners, individuals, professionals, is a tremendous amount of opportunity that's hidden below the surface. We're going to dive underneath the surface, make all of that accessible, demystify, take away the scary parts, and and talk to real people who are doing real work in our community to make it possible that not only are there good jobs, but there's strong companies, there's thriving communities, there's interesting people. And there's good work being done. Absolutely. That's what I see when I look out. And, I, you know, I don't want us to lose the opportunity to engage some of our existing business owners. Absolutely because, not. You know, it's not just about new businesses, but those who have existing business 
businesses, we want you guys to start thinking entrepreneurially as well. Um, Taking a look at your business today and how with maybe some tweaks or looking at the market opportunities here in the St. Louis market that exists might be able to put your your business on a new trajectory that you might not have considered. Understanding what are the needs in this market, which could, you know, blossom out not only from a regional standpoint, but a global standpoint, maybe changing your product portfolio, uh, something that you never thought about. You know, I go back to the example, if you are providing, you know, bottled water as an example to the marketplace, we've got this life science boom here going on in the St. Louis market. Maybe that's distilled water that you can add to your product portfolio that gets you now another opportunity or another market to get into that maybe you didn't consider before. So this goes back to this entrepreneurial mindset, you know, uncovering, looking at new strategies, looking at how you can position your business to be successful. Because you know what? Times have changed, markets have changed, and opportunities are changing. And for those folks that have existing businesses, we we also want to engage you too as well because we think there's great opportunity for you too. You don't need to create a new widget. You maybe need to have that widget um, marketed in a different way. And we're always looking at who's able to take advantage of the opportunities that are being created. And a real question is, who might we be leaving behind? Mm -hmm. And if we're going to be intentional about creating a thriving economy where not just a few people are very successful, but a lot of people Mm -hmm. are successful, then we have to... um, We have to make sure that people know what's going on and they don't leave time, talent, or money on the table. The worst thing that could happen to us is to create a boom that nobody knows about, (laughs) right? I'm not even sure you can create a boom that nobody knows about. It's a soft boom. It's a soft boom. (laughs) But that soft boom, is if it's only heard by a few people who are tuned into the right frequency, then it does. It does pass people by. And you turn around and you go, well, that entrepreneurial and innovative community, that sounds like a really nice thing, but it, it didn't change my life in any way and it didn't create a job for me and it's not helping my kids. My hope is that uh, what we're doing here will make sure that there are fewer people left behind. There are more people brought into the fold. There are more opportunities created and that it, it grows exponentially and that boom cannot be missed. Mm-hmm. Changing the way you view new ventures, igniting your thinking about entrepreneurship, it's Entrepreneurially Thinking. Get connected and discover more. Visit our website for show notes, resources, information about our guests, upcoming events, and of course, all your favorite episodes. If you have any questions, be sure to leave them for us in the comment sections and be sure to leave us a five-star rating on iTunes. The best way to show love is to share. Let everybody know that you're thinking entrepreneurially. So visit our website, entrepreneurallythinking.com. Hashtag EthinkSTL. Entrepreneurially Thinking is another positive production of Rare Gem Productions. Thanks for listening.